release of Prince of Persia The Forgotten Sands may coincide with the upcoming Disney picture, but don't expect a movie tie-in. After his Technicolor identity crisis in 2008, the prince is back in a form closer to tradition. The result hues close to what you'd expect. Is this enough in 2010? You ask as if I were a ruffian, a wanderer with no place in this palace. <laughs> On a journey to visit his brother so he could learn a thing or two about statecraft, the prince arrives to find his kingdom at war. He takes the discovery in stride, whipping out his scimitar and traipsing across the besieged palace's crumbling walls a second after saying hello. Of course, it turns out the invasion is the least of the brother Malik's worries. Before long, another formidable player emerges, a deranged genie named Ratosh who's been roused from a long slumber, hungry for retribution. He summons an army of crazy sand monsters who lay waste to the palace. Before too long, it becomes clear that the prince also has to contend with his ambitious brother, who starts to froth at the mouth with all that genie power dangling before him. The story is utterly predictable, but it's good for a few smart-ass quips from the prince before they get too tiresome. Once the ravishing queen Razia becomes more of a constant presence, they go into overdrive. Razia? That's usually not a good sign. Overall, don't expect much from this story apart from an impetus to propel you into some harrowing acrobatic platforming sequences. How do you know that? It's complicated, but I think it will work. You'll spend the bulk of your time in the Forgotten Sands hurtling through elaborately designed environments with an increasingly complex arsenal of movement abilities. In earlier Prince of Persia games, a large part of the challenge involved puzzling out your path. That element is much less pronounced now. You'll usually figure out which series of poles, handholds, and columns will get you where you need to go soon after the establishing shot. This time around, it's more about actually executing the crazy acrobatics. As you progress through the game, you'll acquire powers to help you deal with increasingly complex obstacle courses. Early on, you get the ability to freeze water in place, turning waterfalls into scalable walls and spouts into columns and flagpoles. Further on, you gain the power to cause insubstantial surfaces to materialize, though only one at a time, which leads to terrifying games of leapfrog. Late in the game, the platforming sequences begin to incorporate both of these abilities, and when they're at their most complex, they can be quite demanding. Bookending, the acrobatic sequences are large-scale melees that at times feel more like Dynasty Warriors than Prince of Persia. The Prince may not have completely lost his aerialist flair, but this is certainly the most plotting you've ever seen him. It almost feels like the hordes of enemies are there to merely drop experience orbs so you can fuel your power acquisition. For what it's worth, some of the special abilities you can get are quite cool and dramatic once they're fully powered up. Traps and puzzles are there to pace out your journey through the sprawling palace, the former forcing you to flex your acrobatic muscles in between the longer platforming sequences, and the latter introducing low-key moments of respite. There's only one puzzle in the game that we'd qualify as a genuine, tedious time waster. After stumbling across that first set of codependent levers, we assumed the game would be full of them. Thankfully, we were wrong. How are you doing with the gates? I've got the gears unlocked! There are actually some really interesting puzzles that test your reflexes, as well as your noodle. There are survival and time trial modes that you can play through after you've completed the relatively brief single-player scenario. They don't offer much in terms of variety. Survival times you as you battle waves of enemies, while time trial mode challenges you to clear a horde before the clock elapses. But they do let you earn experience after you've completed the game, if you're into that. To its credit, The Forgotten Sands often makes you feel like your hands are working faster than your brains when it comes to some of the more complex acrobatic sequences. Once you're well into the game, you'll be confronted with platforming segments that require super precise timing as they incorporate all the powers and tricks you've learned. Scaling frozen waterfalls and playing leapfrog as you cause phantom platforms to appear and reappear is only the beginning. <laughs> Most of my days in the throne room, I was trying to sneak away. If you thought the previous Prince game was too easy due to the unlimited retries, you'll learn to cherish the energy orbs that allow you to turn back the clock this time around. Failure usually means restarting at a checkpoint that's seldom too far back, but oftentimes you'll have gotten past the intervening sequences by the skin of your teeth. The combat feels pretty subdued in comparison. You feel accomplished enough with your slim repertoire of attacks, stuns, and aerial moves, but it quickly becomes apparent that you can simply mash your way through most fights. There's some variety to the enemies. You'll have to kick enemies with shields before you can kill them, for instance, but for the most part, you can breeze through the hordes by mashing your attacks and dodging when you see a big guy telegraphing his blow. 
we were hoping for a bit more from the prince's grand return. If you can get past the prince's odd-looking face, not to mention his bafflingly fastidious facial hair, you'll find yourself suitably immersed in his world. The environments have a tendency to feel a little monotonous due to rehashed color palettes, though things get a bit more visually interesting once you get into the later levels. The voice work is decent, the prince is as smug and cocky as you'd expect, and Ratosh is believably otherworldly and demonic. Overall, the presentation has its stirring cinematic moments, but the minute-to-minute -minute stuff won't make too strong an impression. We are not so short-lived as humans, or so quick to forget things of vital importance. Prince of Persia The Forgotten Sands is serviceable enough, but a grand return to form it isn't. Frankly, it feels a little warmed over. If you've been pining for a Prince of Persia game that's closer to what you played last generation, this one will do for a rental. Here's to a more proper return to follow soon.